Good evening. Nice to see you all. Just add a minute. Hi, Em. Um. Hi. Hello. Just, I'm just checking people off as you join. There are quite a few people tonight, so I don't want to start too early if we've still got people coming on. So nice to see Hi, you Rebecca. all. I hope you've all had a lovely day. Just I'm in a rush getting on here. <laughs> <laughs> Been quite busy, has it? I just, yeah, I've had to set up a different laptop and it's kind of too loud to in load Zoom and Zoom. Well. Oh, I know, I know, yeah. <laughs> um, Steve messaged me to say that he wouldn't be able to make it. His meeting's overrunning, so he won't be able to join, unfortunately. You're slacking again, basically. Yeah. <laughs> no better to do his time. I'll, I'll not say that you said that. <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> Look, there we are. So, who else? I will just give it a couple more minutes. I've got a few more people to join us. He actually messaged me and said he can make it, so I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Wait, oh, well, he won't be able to because I don't think he's got the link in that yeah. case. Oh, he has got the link. Yeah, I'll pass it over if you don't mind. All right, no, yeah, that's fine. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I know, because I sort of kept extending <laughs> the deadline of when people could join, because I thought, I want to, you know, I need to know roughly who's yeah. joining and when so I can look out for people. So, no, that's fine then. Oh, brilliant. Oh, if you can, that's excellent. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, I know what it's like. Even though we might be um, doing more stuff online. Yeah. It's just as busy, isn't it, sometimes? So. Oh, definitely. Just to see. Uh, am I expecting? Uh, I've just had somebody message me to say that she can't get on for some reason. Let me have a look. Hi, Andy. I did wonder who Natalie was, so thank you for, for sharing that. <laughs> That's brilliant. I think, oh, I don't know, then Natalie. That's all right. Right. I've got somebody else who's trying to get on, apparently, and she can't. So just give me a second while I see if I can work out what's happened here for her. Yeah, called many things before, but Natalie's a new one. Yeah, maybe only at weekends, eh? <laughs> uh... I agree with a heckle like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I want, I want to say it's by design, but it's not. It's male pattern <laughs> It's of mother nature, I'm afraid. Right. Might be the same way. Sandra. Uh, let me just see if I can find the the number to get this lady on again. Give her the details. <clears throat> Got a couple more people joining, so just bear with me one second. Thank you very much. Be um, feel free to be introducing yourselves in the the chat box if you want to, who you are, and also what'd be really helpful actually, if you don't mind, is tell me where you heard about the event tonight, please, because there's a few people's names I don't recognise, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, but it'd be really nice to know how you found out about it, please. Just oh, here we are. She's on. Oops. Back up again. LinkedIn, brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi Sandra, I'm glad you got on. Sorry, I was just trying to find the code to send it to you. I had a panic myself actually earlier this evening. I'm thinking 
I can't see in my Zoom meetings where it is. <laughs> yeah, I was looking, you know, waiting for it, as you said. And I've been sat here for an hour thinking I'm going to be prepared, but I couldn't get on. <laughs> Don't worry, that's fine. Oh, Steve, I like that. Your primary job is making coffee for Phil. Phil, have you seen that? I've done what he's done. Yeah. I just drink say coffee. <laughs> it doesn't make a good coffee, I've got to admit. Oh, that's all right then. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Brilliant. Thank you very much. It's nice to see where everybody's from. We've got um, all sorts of different places and everything. So I suspect we've probably got as many people as we're going to get tonight. Let me have a look, make sure. So let's have a look, Claire from Make a Brew. Thank you, yeah, say, say hello. Take a notice and who else is in here as well. Always nice to, um, to make contacts. Right, I'm just gonna share my screen with you tonight. I promise I'm not, it's not gonna be death by a PowerPoint. So hopefully you've all got pens and paper ready as well because this is interactive. I do want you to actually um, be taking some notes. I have some questions for you to answer as well as we're going along. So thank you, like I said, thank you very much for joining me this evening. It is brilliant that you've invested time in yourself and your futures. Just take a few deep breaths if you need to, shake off the day basically and just be present in the moment. Oh, we've got a few more people joining me. Hang on a second, sorry. One of those things. Go. You right, sweetie? Yeah. Okay. Let me just stop. I'm just gonna stop sharing. Everybody, just sorry, people popped up showing that they were coming in. Um, sorry, I'm late. No problem at all. That's fine. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining. Brilliant to have you here. So I am just going to, if she says, if she can. I can't remember now. If I can just ask you all to put yourselves on mute, because they're always changing this and I can never remember how to find it when there's so many of you. I can just ask you to pop yourselves on mute so we don't get too much distraction. That'd be really helpful. Um, and obviously unmute yourselves when we're when we get going. Uh, well, I'll just see. So yeah, just shake off the day and um, make sure you are present in the moment. All right, it'll help if I share my screen, wouldn't it? So you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. Um, and a big welcome to you all. So thank you for sharing where you've seen this advertised and who you are and what you do. That's brilliant. And if you have got any questions as we're going along, please feel free to ask them and pop them in the chat box. I will have a, a little bit of time at the end for you to ask questions then as well. So I can't always see the chat box very well when I'm um, actually on the presentation. So I'm not ignoring you and I will certainly come back to you um, as we go along or at the end there as well. So who am I? I am Rebecca Norton, founder of Sense of Direction, life and well-being coach, NLP practitioner, jack of all trades, or as somebody put it more eloquently, a lady of many talents. Um, I have interest in many things and developed numerous skills over the years. I have dabbled in teaching. I have been an outdoor activity instructor, first aid trainer, project and development worker, a few other bits and bobs in that as well. It might sound like an eclectic career, um, but the thing in common is that they have all given me the opportunity to help other people in some way or another. And I've always felt incredibly privileged to enjoy my work. Um, I've worked for some wonderful organisations with some wonderful people, and I have never had that awful Monday morning feeling of dreading going back to work. So I do feel incredibly privileged to be in that position because I know not everybody is. However, I also recognise that there's more to life than work. And I also have many interests outside of traditional work. And one thing that's remained constant since childhood is my love for the outdoors. We were quite an outdoorsy family and um, walking has become an important way for me to maintain my well-being. And I think it probably has been for a lot of people over lockdown, actually. And I realised that when I went out for a walk or when I go out walking, I always feel better afterwards, basically. 
if I have any worries or thoughts to process, then they always seem to untangle when I'm out on a walk. And I can literally feel the weight lifting off my shoulders. I'll often start out at a fast pace, feel the weight lift and then can slow down and relax into it and really, really enjoy it. And it was actually while I was out walking several years ago, that I decided that I wanted to be a life coach not just any life coach, I wanted to take people outdoors so that they could experience the same benefits that I got as well. And that is how a sense of direction was born. The other thing that I've realized over the years is that I am not very good at making big changes in one go. <laughs> um, I've gradually adapted my lifestyle. I've added in particular habits and routines as I've learned about them through personal development and study, basically. And I love learning. I've been in and out of education and studying since I've left formal education, basically. And I often study or read just because I'm interested in something. But the key to personal development and the key to growth is implementing, in, implementing what you learn and basically taking action. And that's the most important part. We can read and learn all we want, but unless we actually do something with that knowledge, it's not actually going to do anything for us and change things. And so that's why I hope you're here this evening, because you want to make some changes in your life and are ready to take action. So let's admit it, nothing changes if nothing changes. We're going to stay where we are if we don't make a conscious effort to change, basically. So we have to make that conscious effort. We have to decide what it is that we want and we need to make a decision that we're ready to take action and that we're willing to do that. One of the things that people can struggle with is deciding where to start. You're not happy with how things are and you want things to be better, but you're just not sure how to do it. So you don't. And um, just as an aside, this picture is one that I took a few years ago when I was walking in Sweden. It's part of the Kingsleden Trail. And um, that's the other thing that I love about walking is that it's actually taken me all over the world. And I've, and I've had the privilege of walking in some beautiful places with some wonderful people. Um, it was quite a hard trek, this one, um, but it was the scenery was absolutely stunning. So anyway, I digress, sorry about that. So um, when we don't know where to start and we don't start, the thing is what can happen is that we either end up living a life where we're constantly wondering, is this all there is with a slight edge of resentment? Or you get to a place where things are so uncomfortable that you have to take action, you're forced into it, at which point you've probably got fewer options than if you'd addressed your situation earlier on. So if we tackle things head on, even if it's not comfortable, we're probably going to end up in a much better situation than being forced into doing something. I know change can be overwhelming at times. What you want might seem out of reach or just too big to contemplate. And when we allow ourselves to get caught up in this sort of thinking, we often end up procrastinating and not doing anything. So I have a couple of questions for you. Um, and this is where I want you to make some notes of your ideas and thoughts. If anybody wants to share, you're very welcome, but I just want you to actually jot down some notes yourself. So what's your current circumstance costing you? What is it that you're missing out on by not changing things? Would you be happy staying in this situation for another five years? How about even another year? Would you be happy staying here for another year? What are the consequences of not changing or improving things? What are the consequences of staying where you are? You might be very happy, but there's probably things that you want to change and improve. But uh, how do you overcome this inertia? How do you eat this elephant of a giant of a goal? The thing that you're heading towards? One bite at a time, obviously, is the way that we tackle this one. So things feel less scary when you make minor adjustments. And it's much more sustainable to make small tweaks to things as well, to your behavior, to your actions, to your routines, because it feels much more manageable. How often have you made New Year's resolutions, such as wanting to start going to the gym, however many times a week, cutting out chocolate, starting this, stopping that? When we, make, when we try and make too many changes or too big a change, 
they don't last generally. Um, one day you feel like you can't be bothered or something gets in the way and you stop and it's the same the next day and you miss two days and then you miss three days and then you think what's the point and you just give up. So when it's so big it just becomes too overwhelming. However, small actions can be deceptively effective due to the compound effect. And that's the name of a book. I don't know whether you can say that. And it's The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Um, and if you haven't read it, I can highly recommend it. Very easy reading. And he explains really well how small actions accumulate over time and become much bigger and have a huge impact, basically. And I am just going to show you a little video fingers crossed that this will work now, which demonstrates that really well, all the domino effect. In fact, there's no, there's no video showing on the screen. Hang a minute, sorry. Right. Can you hear it but not see it? Yep. Okay, yes, let me. So it's probably something to do with my setting. Hang on a minute. If I can't play it, it is worth watching. If I can't um, play it this evening, what I will do is send you the link. Uh, because it is definitely worth watching. Oh, is anybody technical on this? It worked when I tried it before. I had a practice with somebody and it worked. You need to think of YouTube and then start it with and then share that, share that screen. All right, so let me stop that. I will try that way. Okay, do okay. Right this way. Can you see my screen now? Is it showing YouTube? Brilliant. Let me yes. expand that and start again for you. It's only a minute long. Can't hear it. Did that play properly? We, we, we couldn't hear it, but we got. Oh, you couldn't hear it. it. <laughs> you got one or the other. <laughs> oh, well, hopefully you didn't need to hear it, basically. It was just saying that if there was 29, so there were 13 dominoes there, basically. And if there had been 29, the 29th one would have been as big as the Empire State Building. Um, so it just demonstrates how math, how big an impact it can be um, just with the small actions. They really do build up and make a huge difference. So bear with me a second. Let's resume where we were. Thank you for bearing me with me on this one. Yes, there we go. Okay, can you see my screen again now? Just thumbs up. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much for that. 
So yeah, um, and on a personal level, small actions do build big results. At the beginning of this month, I started a plank challenge with um, one of my friends, basically. The plank is in the exercise plank. And um, we started off by doing 20 seconds on the first of the month. And we're following a plan. This is not something we've made up. This is a plan that we're following. And um, basically each day, we add about 10 seconds to that. And by the end of the month, if we follow the plan properly, we'll be doing the plank for four minutes. Um, <laughs> today, it was two minutes 30. And now, if you'd asked me at the beginning of the month, could I manage this length of time, then I'd have definitely said no. Um, it's not easy, but I am getting there. And it's just through small, consistent action of building up by 10 seconds a day that I get into the amount that I'm getting to. But it really does work. So once we get going with making small changes or adjustments, then we start to build momentum. And it's momentum that's going to carry us through. Because once we start to build momentum, things become easier. It's easier to make further adjustments, further changes. We start to feel good about things because we're actually doing something. We begin to see progress. We begin to see results. And like a steam train, it might be difficult to get going. But once you start, the momentum carries you through and it's very difficult to stop. So it's really important to keep going in those first few days, weeks when you're trying to make change, because ultimately you will get going, you will get there and it will carry you through. So as promised, my five top tips for making um, and creating lasting change. Number one. So again, you need your pens and paper ready for this. I'd like you to write down your answers just or your own thoughts and things on this. So what is it that you want to achieve? Be really specific about this. What goals and outcomes do you want to achieve in the short term? What are your aspirations and desires in the long term? What do you want to be different? So it is really important that you're specific with this. So for example, if you want to feel happier, what does happiness mean to you? How will you know if or when you are happier? What will be the indicators? What does success mean to you? Whatever it is that you're trying to change, how will you know that you've got there? And I love this quote by Alice in Wonderland because I think this sums it up really well. So Alice gets to see the Cheshire cat in a tree and she asks, which road do I take? And his response was a question. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Alice answered, then said the cat, it doesn't matter. Basically, if we don't know where to go, how do we know which way we're heading? How do we know if we even get there? So it's really important to be specific about what it is that you want so you can head off in the right direction, you can take the right actions and you can get there more easily. So be specific about what it is that you want to achieve. Number two, know your why. Why is this goal important here? Why is it that you want to change these things? What are the benefits of making these changes? List them, make a list of all these things. How will you feel when you've made these changes or, made, or done the things that you want to do? What will it allow you to do? Knowing this will help us to keep going when things get tough. There's always gonna be challenges. There's always gonna be obstacles, always things that's gonna knock us off track. So if we can really get in touch with why we want to make changes, why it's important to us, that's gonna help us keep going when we do feel challenged and we do meet these obstacles and barriers. It'll give us that motivation to push through when things are difficult. And then number three, break the task or their objective down into manageable steps. If it feels too big, then break it down even further. Making it small and manageable means that we're more likely to stick to it. It's not too difficult for us. So I want you to list down two or three steps that you can take in the next week for your shorter term goals. And then thinking about any longer term goals that you're trying to achieve, identify some key milestones or some markers that you need to get to to get to where you want to go in the end. And again, it just helps to get to one point, then you can get to the next point and you recognize your progress then. 
often we can see progress when we stop and turn around and have a look behind us. So if you think back to where you were last year, what's changed since then? And then step four, focus on just one thing and stick with it until it becomes a habit. Otherwise it can often feel overwhelming and we either stop doing it, we don't start or we get off track very easily and we get put off. So just sticking to one thing until it becomes a habit. And the other thing that's really important about this as well is focus on what you want, not what you're trying to avoid. So sometimes knowing what we're moving away from can be really helpful to get you started. So if you're in a job that you really don't like, that might be the push to get you going and make those changes to start something. However, it might not keep you going to your dream job. It might be that you get another job, it's a little bit better, the money's a bit better, it's all right. It's not your dream job, but it'll do. And you might get stuck at that point. So always focus on what you want rather than trying to focus on the things that you're avoiding. And then number five is create sticky habits. And I love this one. So when you're trying to start a new habit, it can be really helpful to stick it onto something else that you're already doing. So hopefully you all clean your teeth at least once a day. So use that as a trigger. What could you do before or after you clean your teeth? So if you're wanting to start a new habit or maybe it's to do with your mindset, maybe it's about challenging some limiting beliefs or whatever, what can you use as a trigger to remind yourself to do this new behavior or take this new action? Because that's often the problem when we're trying to start something new, we can have difficulty remembering to do it or you know, fitting it into our day or knowing when to do it or whatever. So think about what you already do in your day where you could fit it in. What could you use as a trigger to remind you that that's what you're meant to be doing? The, my own example is, um, I've often been wanting to meditate more. I've been trying to do it for years and, you know, I know the benefits of it and what have you, but I've always struggled because I never had a set place in my day to do it. I tried doing it in the morning and it didn't work and then I'd forget or whatever. And then a couple of months ago, I had a bit of a brainwave and I realised that I sit down at my computer most days and I thought that's the really good trigger point. I could actually do it before I turn my computer on. So now when I sit down at my laptop, that's my trigger. Before I turn it on, I'll do five minutes meditation and I just stick with five minutes because five minutes is manageable if I want to do more then I will but I know that I can manage five minutes and that's really helped me to stick with it and it's been working for me for the last uh, couple of months on there so jot down what could you use as a trigger to help you remember to take your new action or change your behavior whatever it is that you're wanting to work towards what is it that you already do that you can attach it to? What can be your sticky habit? So although change can feel scary, it can also be really exciting. And it is possible when you tackle it in the right way. Having the right support and accountability can increase your success rate as well so sharing your goal with somebody else having somebody to be accountable to can be really helpful and that's why i developed the start of a 10. so this is a catalyst or a kickstart to help people get to build change to create some solid foundations basically it's a great way to start building momentum because all i'm asking you to do is to find 10 minutes each day for 10 days so 10 minutes Everybody can find 10 minutes in the day and 10 days helps you to build up it into a habit and into a routine then. So the daily exercises get you thinking about what you really want and why. So it builds on that why step, what I talked about earlier, and it gives you the structure and helps you create solid foundations to build upon. So we're looking to some of the skills and the habits and the mindset that you need to develop change. So it's daily worksheets that emailed out for 10 days. I also provide support, extra support on two of the days, on day five and on day 10. Like I said, we often come across challenges or obstacles or whatever. So I want to be there so that you've got some um, opportunity to ask questions and we can address some of those challenges and to share feedback as well and successes. 
So by sharing our successes, that helps with other people as well. Private Facebook group, and it's 10 minutes for 10 days, for 10, 10 pounds basically. So it's a great way to get started because it's just 10 minutes, like I said. And with £10, you really have got nothing to lose and lots to gain. And I know there are a couple of people on here this evening um, that have been on my Starter for 10. So I've run this the last couple of Januaries. This is feedback from one of the people this January. And if there's anybody else on here who feels that they would like to share what you've got out of the start of the day, then please do so um, from the horse's mouth rather than from me telling you what, what people have got. Feel free to do that yourselves. Um, so the next program starts on April the 17th and it runs for 10 days basically from that point. I've also created something that's a little bit on the deeper level. So Stepping Out is um, a more in-depth program that helps you to take those changes to the next level, basically. Helps you get unstuck and move forwards towards whatever it is that you're wanting to achieve. And again, this program breaks elements down into small manageable steps with structure to guide you and provide you with the right mindset, the time, this is a specific time each week and tools to take action. It's a four step process over four weeks. These are um, live sessions basically. So I'll be leading the sessions and everybody will be joining in. Um, private Facebook group. This is a limited size group, this one, because I want everybody to feel like they've got the time, the space to share and to interact while feeling safe and confident to do so. And um, it's, yeah, like I said, it just brings the next level of support and that accountability to do this. So this is an introductory offer, £97 for the four week session. And again, here is a testimonial from somebody who's already on the, the programme at the moment for this. So it provides that space and the time. You'll actually do the work in the session. And I think that's sometimes a difficulty. We'll go on these events and these presentations, write down loads of notes and feel really motivated and feel really excited about it. And then it gets left in the notebook and we don't do anything about it. So I'm asking you to do the work actually during the session. So you will make the difference during that session, basically. So these two programs complement each other. Start for 10 is a great way to get you started and then stepping out provides you with the next level more in depth. Um, and the next program of this one starts on Wednesday, the 19th of May, and then is four weeks from then basically. So it's the 19th, the 26th of May, the 2nd and the 9th of June. So both are designed to get you started on your journey of change build solid foundations in a manageable and a sustainable way that will keep you going long term. And my question to you now is how long are you willing to put up with your current circumstances? And what would it mean to you if you could change things for the better? How would it impact on your life? So look back at what you wrote down, at the things that you're aiming to do. Look back at the goals that you're wanting to achieve and the benefits that you'll get if you make those changes. And just think about how important it is to you to make those changes. So over to you. I will stop sharing, in fact, so we can see each other a bit more. Better. Um, so what I'd like you to do is I want some accountability here from you. All right. I want you to pop in the chat box one action that you're going to take over the next few days. Because, Like I said, otherwise you'll have a list of wonderful things in your notebook and that's exactly where they will stay. So the best time to make a decision and to actually commit to doing something is as soon as you can. So definitely write it down on your paper, but if you're willing to share, that'd be really helpful as well. And you might encourage other people. So what is it that you're gonna to commit to doing over the next few days towards your short-term goal or your long-term goal, whatever you want. I'm just gonna have a quick scroll through the chat box here. Great, done. So we'll check, check in with you tomorrow if you're in your office by 10. <laughs> 
brilliant schedule study times that's the thing and sometimes we can be really good and put things in our diary but we actually have to stick to it as well I'm a bugger for doing that I'll put it in my diary and think right I'll do it today and then something else will pop up and it takes priority and then I'll just get distracted or whatever excellent thank you Linda hide the mobile yeah wonderful things but very very distracting cycle every day avoiding sticky notes <laughs> Excellent. Okay, stretch your morning routine. Yeah, if you can fit it into something that you're already doing, it's really good if you can just add in one extra step. Thank you, these are really useful. So yeah, please have a look with each other and see if there's anything there that think, oh, you could do that as well. Move more, right landing page for new product. Excellent. And please feel free to share with me how you get on with these things as well. Um, I think I know most people here, so it'd be lovely to hear how you get on with this. Make Steve a coffee. <laughs> Sounds like you already do already. <laughs> 20 minutes running. Excellent. Oh, these are really good. So think about how you're going to take these actions. It's all right saying that you're going to do them, but what will make you do them? And again, um, you know, if the weather's bad, will you still go out? you know, if for your run or whatever it is. So what will you do to make sure that things don't stop you from doing this? So you need a what if plan. So what if this happens, then I will do X, Y, and Z to make sure it doesn't stop me there. So it's really important. You can schedule it. You have to learn to schedule it and you need to learn to put in some reminders there as well. So thank you very much. That's excellent. Some really good points in there as well. So, I will send you um, a little gift, a little resource by email after this. And it's basically a little pledge for you to fill in. And I want you to put it somewhere prominent to remind yourself of what it is that you want to do, why you want to do it, why it's important to you, and to have a think about who can help you as well. You know, like I said, share it with other people so you've got some accountability. It's so easy to just stop doing things if you haven't told anybody because then nobody can be bugging you and nudging you and saying, oh, but you said you're going to do that. So checking in with other people is really helpful. Um, I will also send you the links to the two programmes as well so you can find out more if you want to. And if anybody's got any questions that they want to ask privately, you can send me an email or connect with me through social media as well. That'd be brilliant. And thank you very much for showing up this evening. I recognise that it is quite late for some people. I really appreciate you, you showing up for me and also give yourselves a pat on the back for showing up for yourself and the things that you want to change as well. It's really important. It's, it's a really good step in the right direction, basically. Um, if you have enjoyed this evening, please don't keep it to yourself. Share it with other people. Let other people know that it's available as well. Um, and I would love your feedback um, from this tonight. So I'll be in touch. I'll send you the email. You'll get the pledge in there and you'll get the links to the resources. And if anybody particularly wants the slides, I'm quite happy to share them too. Just let me know. That's fine. You can reply to an email and, and I'm quite happy to send them out. But thank you ever so much for turning up. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I really do appreciate you coming along and uh, take care and hopefully I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Thanks so much, Bye. Rebecca. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Yeah, okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hang on a minute. I'm going to just let me start.